how about schools utilize those? Or even government, or maybe, for example, we have a neighbor in Uganda, we have uh, the innovation village, create hubs. And then say in holidays, we say, we are picking one teacher from each school in this kind of locality, take them to that hub, train them on a, a, a specific aspect, okay? There are online courses that people can do. I remember while we were doing this, we are, uh, I undertook a course of technology enhanced learning. So that teachers are exposed to some tools, simple tools that we can use, that with my mobile phone, I can download Canva and then create content with pictures, create graphics, okay? So that when I go to my literature class, I don't need to struggle so much to teach children about tone and mood. Mm. How, how do we solve the problem of, of learners, the 1% and the 99%, how do we bridge that gap? The 1% and the 99%, the, the pain, it's not a problem, it's, we call it the pain of the 99%. Like Cohen's has um, elaborated, the majority of our teachers are the, I would say they are also equally underprivileged. They cannot access the phones, they cannot access the technology available, even the schools, you can find a whole school in my village, which um, here Immaculate was saying in the other corner, the whole village does not even have a computer. If, like Cohen has discussed, he says, we use the resources, we share the resources with those that don't have. If, you, if an institution had 10, 15 computers with two teachers, you share the two computers within the community, you can create a center within that underprivileged community. They may, it may not help them 100%, but there is a portion it will help. So it will start changing. Even if Up next on UBC, brought to you by... Keep the lights on. Use Airtel money to pay for all your Yaka bills conveniently. Open the My Airtel app to buy Yaka units. Airtel money. Simple, secure, borderless. It is Monday, the 27th day of uh, June 2022. Hello there and welcome to our first edition of News Tonight. First of all, let's have a look at our top stories. In our top stories tonight, uh, Prime Minister Robina Nabanja describes the Arts Teachers Industrial Action as uncalled for. Police crime report shows poverty and economic hardships fueling crime. Government commits 200 billion shillings in commercial banks as a merchant grant. And in sports, the sports minister urges federations to pursue excellence to increase the sector's lobbying powers.
Hello there and uh, welcome once again on Sign Language. It is Elizabeth Nakakoni and I am Rukidi Edward Kijanangoma. And we are coming to you live on air and online from Broadcast House here on Nal Avenue. And let's get started. The Prime Minister, Robin Nabanja, has described the arts teachers' industrial action as unfair and uncalled for. Speaking in an interview with UBC's Dennis Sigoa, the Prime Minister appealed to the striking teachers to return to class as negotiations to avert the situation continue or else risk being deleted uh, from the government payroll. Let's have more in this part story. On 14th of June 2022, Uganda National Teachers Union announced a sit-down strike for all arts teachers over what it terms as a proposed biased salary enhancement in favor of science teachers in government schools. It's now week three and the government is urging the striking teachers to return to class as it engages with the UNATU leadership on matters of salary enhancement. The teachers should go to school and teach because government is committed to enhance their pay but in a phased manner, depending on availability of funds. We shall start with uh, scientists this financial year, then phase our other public servants. The Prime Minister, Robin Anabanja, condemns the industrial action, calling it unfair. Our children, especially from the poor background, the ones who are affected the most because those you see on TV, their children go to private schools. But even then, despite the fact that the, uh, the, the economy had been closed, the teachers were still receiving their pay. They have been in a class for only a few months and now they are on strike. This is very unfair. She however noted that government will not be held at transom for too long and issued a 30th June ultimatum to the teachers whom she said are absconding from duty. We have put the cows, the chief administrative officers, on notice to delete them from payroll by 30th of June. And these, these are not threats. You're saying they don't have the powers, the cows don't have the powers. The cows are the ones who have been putting our teachers on payroll and they are the ones who can direct them from payroll. Politicizing of the matter and empty promises by the politicians is also criticized. When I saw my colleague members of parliament woodwinking teachers that uh, we shall pass a supplementary budget to enhance their pay. I felt embarrassed. I felt sorry for this country. Why? Because the members of parliament passed the budget and most of those colleagues who were there playing to the gallery, some of them are members of, of, of the budget committee. They are. Majority of those engaged in the industrial action are arts teachers in primary schools in Kampala and some upcountry schools. Dennis Igor for UBC News. Thanks, Dennis, for that uh, story there. Minol Mitiana Diocese Vicar General Monsignor Lawrence Mukasa has asked government to ensure beneficiaries of the parish development model cash are sensitized first. The government is currently rolling out the parish development model in all parishes of the country, as we hear in this story. While celebrating Holy Mass during a fundraising drive for St. Chizito Chengeza Catholic Church in Mitiana District, Monsignor Mokasa said that parish development model requires a thorough sensitization of beneficiaries. <laughs> The Prime Minister, Robin Anabanja, also the chief guest at the fundraising, asked art teachers to return to school. <laughs> But if we can start somewhere, 
Makiza mkize, tutahalikile na hawo Umago kutako So economic transformation Ni democracy Sina mseme tanya democracy Unumukazi wadi ya wadi ya wadi ya wadi ya wadi ya wadi Na ye abalakuzi Bona baji Kuki tumana wadi ya wadi ya wadi ya wadi Agnes Chirabo, the youth member of parliament central region, challenged the youth to guard against HIV and AIDS like they did for COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> During the fundraising organized by the Busunju County Legislator, David Kalwanga and Joyce Bagala, the woman member of parliament for Mitiana District, over 100 million shillings was realized in cash and pledges. <laughs> The Prime Minister contributed 10 million shillings towards the completion of the church. Let's go to Gulu now, where the Minister of State for Environment, Beatrice Anwar has urged leaders in Acholi subregion to stop mixing politics in the implementation of the parish development model. Take a watch. The Minister of State for Environment, Beatrice Anuar, has advised political leaders from Acholi subregion to put aside all their political differences and look at the parish development model as a driving force to accelerate the generation of wealthy Ugandans at grassroots level. The benefit of uh, the PDM has no political face, though there are those who want to amplify it in a political way. The minister's remarks came after Gulu City Mayor Alfred Okwang unveiled the direct involvement of the members of National Resistance Movement Party in the implementation of parish development model at grassroots. Dear colleagues, the honorary leaders who are here, we have been crying that we should be involved in the government projects. And many government projects have failed in NRM regime because the NRM leaders from down were not involved. This is now a different thing. You are now going to be fully involved in monitoring from your villages, from your palaces, from your division, from your city. Will this project fail again? Gulu City resident city commissioner Jen Francis Okili among in, asked the leaders to embrace the parish development model in order to achieve its ultimate goal of elevating every household from subsistence to middle income economy. We need to understand PDM, we need to fall in love with PDM because you cannot sell what you don't love. And this is the biggest problem we have had with the rest of the government programs we have had. Once the leaders do not sell it, then it won't sell. But I want to plead with you that this is the last bullet to shoot in poverty. The area MP for Aswa constituency in Gulu district, Simon Wokoraj, expressed gratitude to the NRM government for the timely decision of enrolling PDM, saying it will quickly boost the economy by empowering all Ugandans at grassroots. We are happy that come 1st of July 2022, going forward, each parish will receive direct from Ministry of Finance, 100 million to support and elevate these people from being subsistence into the money economy. 
and we want to have people who have money in their pockets. In the village, they should be having money in their pockets. The reactions were felt as State Minister for Environment Beatrice Sanyuar held her first meeting in Acholi sub-region following the suspension of cabinet meetings and parliament's sent on recess to ensure that MPs and ministers moved down and sensitize the people at the grassroots about the parish development model. Let's go to Budiaka now, where a state minister for persons with disabilities, Helen uh, Samu, has asked communities in uh, Budiaka district to embrace government uh, programs uh, for livelihood transformation. Uh, Samu was addressing residents of Patete Parish in uh, Budiaka district attending a parish development model training. State Minister for Persons with Disability Helena Samu has challenged community members of Patete Parish, Budaka District to exploit available resources to improve their household incomes. Speaking at the PDM sensitization meeting in Budaka District, Asamo said residents of North Bukedi have to engage in food production as they embrace the PDM program. She said residents should make use of the newly constructed Tiringi Parisa and Kamonkoli Kumi Highway to market their goods. In our discussion, we realized some of them are just waiting for one million. So we have told them. In their areas, they already have resources. For example, they have land. However small it is, they should be able to use it to produce as we wait for this money to make them be helped. We have road, very good roads in this place, right from Kamonkoli to Palisa and whatever. But the people are not yet being production so that we can have a lot of things being exported. A facilitator from Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovations, Dr. Isiko urged participants to appreciate hard work for wealth creation. <laughs> Drael Baguma from Makere University advised participants to appreciate sensitization initiatives in order to understand the parish development model. We move on, we gas, we are going to go to Ghana, now we live in Ghana, most of the people who come to Qatar. We go to the city now, we use our time and our money, we know we are going to go to the city, we know we are going to go to the city, we know we are going to go to the city, we know we are going to go to the Budaka is famous for mangoes and livestock products, but participants confess that lack of market is a problem. <laughs> Now, communities and uh, religious leaders in Greater Luero District have commended government for rolling out the parish development model for transformation of people's livelihood. They now want specialized training and sensitization campaigns for the intending um, the beneficiaries for effective impact. UBC News crew uh, was in Luero to gauge the progress of the community mobilization and filed the following story. <laughs> The Parish Development Model Program is being looked at as a game changer within communities that will embrace it across the country. But the introduction of the Parish Development Model has given us a lot of hopes. The way how it has been prepared, it has a lot of beneficiaries. But Launched by President Yori Kagutam Seven early this year in Chibuko District, the program is now being rolled out ac across the country, beginning with community mobilization. 
State Minister for Higher Education Dr. Jesse Mwingo was represented by his political assistant Abdul Karim Waswadu during the Paris Development Model in Kalungu Bamanika in Luweru. <laughs> Mureme kufuna sente ndikanzi fune nzi wasemu mukazi mu 7 atwe kubiyeke mfufu ndine sente siza bya bufuzi buliwe muzi kwato obubi mwe musigale obubi buliwe muzi kwato obubi mwe musigale mabega naye mbasa basere dilo zikozese bulungi kuba government tande mu sente he also advised communities to support government programs to enable them develop and teachers to maintain patriotism and love for their country. A cleric, a cleric at St. Simon Kalagala Church of Uganda, Reverend Ordnant George William Kawes advised beneficiaries of the parish development model to aim at improving their socio-economic standing. It will be like something. Those people who get it, they will spoil it because they don't know, they don't understand what to do with that parish model man. I think so, because even me, I've never seen those people who are moving around. So what I mean or what I think is that many of them, they have not seen them. Maybe they have gone somewhere which they know that that one will get, that one will get. Then those people who in need, who Now, the political leadership in Rukunjiri district has uh, finalized the uh, official launch of the government-led parish development model program by Vice President uh, Jessica Alupo on Thursday. And uh, we should uh, remind you that this event was scheduled for Tuesday this week, but has been postponed to Thursday this week. Robert Onyango gives us more. It is now a fortnight ever since President Yuri Kagutam Seven suspended the cabinet meetings and the Speaker of Parliament too, sending Parliament into a one-month recess for mass mobilization of the government-led parish development model. The model seeks to improve household income with the 1.5 trillion budget allocated for this undertaking. This executive directive must be implemented to the letter with all cabinet ministers, MPs and chief administrative officers preaching the PDM gospel in their areas of jurisdiction. <laughs> In Rukungiri district officials from Uganda Bureau of Statistics are locked into a routine assignment with the local leaders to retrieve data from all local communities. Some ch you get some challenges from the some people giving wrong information. So please we are telling you they were encouraging people to give us the correct information. And we have uh, sensitized our people and we have trained our people, those who are collecting uh, data. Don't force anybody to give you information. According to the district leaders, the youth, however, will require an extra persuasion to join the bandwagon. Some youth who do not like work, they want to spend more time at the trading centers, in the towns, moving about, drinking area in the morning, some, some alcohols, playing mueto and mueso and matatu. So some of these people who who want to do to work, seem not to, uh, to embrace it. Despite of the efforts to make the parish development model successful, unlike the previous undertakings to kick poverty out of Uganda, the data compilation process is also registering some setbacks, as the district leaders explains. Some people are saying that this program cannot work, blah, blah, and so on, because of the previous programs, and the, also, you know, in politics comes in, those are guys of the opposition, they say, no, 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 this program cannot work. With the already available markets under the parish development model, the district will focus much of its energies on value addition to spur opportunities. We are now very much assured of the market because the, our industrial park is about to start. Once the industrial park starts, all our products are going to have the market. We are emphasizing the mindset change, people to join the money economy by having what to sell because that's what will transform our society. The official launch of the District Parish Development Model Program is on this Tuesday, 28th June, with the Vice President of Uganda, retired Major Jessica Alupo, launching the government-led model that seeks to elevate household incomes. All the programs are going to be covered under this program. She will be in the company of the Security Minister, retired Major General Jim Huezi, among other government officials. Robert Onyango, UBC News.
Thanks, Onyango, and uh, remember that uh, that function uh, has been postponed to Thursday uh, this week, and of course it will be presided over by Vice President uh, Jessica Alupo. Now, Wukoma CMB District Education Officer Ziwa Patrick has warned arts teachers in government schools on their continuous strike, saying that they have forgotten that they applied for these jobs individually, not through the umbrella body UNATU. Now, this follows continued absence of arts teachers from schools affecting learners. Let's get more in this story. Despite government threats to scrap arts teaching teachers, on industrial strikes from the government payroll, should they decline to return to classes. The move has not scared the teachers to back off the strike unless otherwise in Bukuman Simbi. In the schools we visited in Bukuman Simbi, students turned in big numbers, but teachers were not available to teach. They remain in their homes until government heed to their demand. The head teacher of St. Joseph S.S. Mutenga, Mukasa Edward, said only two arts teachers appeared, but they just signed in the attendance book and then went away. Mukasa has appealed to government to come out and guide on the way forward as the students accommodation in schools remain wanting. At St. Victor's SS Kitasa, also students appeared in big numbers, but teachers were comfortably sitting under the trees. In primary schools that we managed to monitor, like Kawoko, Muslim Primary School, and Butenga Primary School, neither peoples nor teachers appeared, and the schools were totally closed. Following this situation, the Bukoman Simbi District Education Officer, Mr. Ziwa Patrick, has reminded teachers that they applied for these jobs individually and their umbrella body, UNATU, did not recommend them to get the jobs. I Sally John, a treasurer from UNATO, said they are not ready to tell their teachers to go back to classes unless the government has come out and do the needful. Now let's go to other news and we we'll look at uh, the weekend robbery that uh, happened at uh, a Spice Supermarket in Kona Municipality where police has arrested uh, two of the suspects. Now the first spokesperson Fred Denanga says poverty has uh, pushed many young people in retail uh, crimes and the arrest of these will help to discover the missing gun which was used in uh, this robbery. The police weekly crime report has indicated an increase in retail crimes like robbery, house breakings, fake roadblocks, and other forms of extortions. Peru police in Kampala Metropolitan Eastern Mukono Division are invest, uh, investigating a home invasion attack and robbery uh, against uh, 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 Geneth Kavasha, a female cashier at Rigo, at Rigo Paints and uh, a resident of Canaan site estates. The retail crimes are linked to the increasing poverty and unemployment among youth. But of course we notice that uh, there is uh, a sufficient number of youth who are unemployed. Uh, for instance, in this operation which we made in Kasanga, to the 12 of whom we got during daytime, the intelligence we had is they sleep and then uh, uh, they go and work at night uh, by mugging people who are going back at home late 
and robbing from them. That has been over the weekend. Spice supermarket in Mukono was robbed by gunmen and injured one. Police have arrested two suspects over the incident. Mugalu William, 24 years, and Imbogo Sam, 23 years, are prime suspects in this robbery. Uh, we clearly, uh, these were clearly identified uh, by witnesses who managed to uh, uh, see what took place during the attack at the supermarket. We are now working towards the recovery of the gun and also identifying other members of uh, uh, this gang. Police have also arrested 12 suspects over extorting money from head teachers, threatening them to ban their schools. The that we got from that side. Of course, poverty is one of those factors that drives some of the unemployed youth and, and other people into, into crime. But in Kampala Metropolitan, police have started the community engagement to reduce the escalating crime rate in Kampala suburbs. Urge LCs to continuously register um, their residents because we always keep on saying new residents coming in. So we urge you to continuously register your residents to conduct regular village meetings, especially security village meetings to establish or form WhatsApp security groups. So, because these groups are a way of bringing the police and the communities closer to each other. The worsening economic situation is projected to sour public security and security agencies urged the public to be vigilant about their movements and enhance surveillance in their homes. Abdul Nasir Lubwama, UBC News. It is coming to a half past eight in the studios of UBC TV. News tonight will now take a short break, but we'll return with much more. Do stay with us. Today in history. On this day in history, then President of Uganda, Apollo Milton Obote, received Dr. Oliveira Santo, then Executive Director of the International Coffee Organization. Dr. Santo was on tour of African countries in preparation for the pending meeting in London, England, for the Coffee Council later that year. The Tales of Kasozi, brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Hello, this is Kasozi. How can I help you? Congratulations, congratulations. Oh, one good day. One good day? But I haven't entered any competition. Oh, Dechi, since you use your phone every day, we have randomly selected you as one of our loyal customers, and you have won a brand new pickup. Hey, so how do I get this pickup? The pickup is in Nama Ave. All we have to do is quickly bring it to you. You know, we are delivering many of them. So, just send us 100k for fuel via mobile money and we'll bring it to you. But Chief, I'm in no hurry to receive it. Namambe is just here. Keep it at your warehouse, give me directions and I'll take time to pick it up. Ah, vow now we. If you don't have money, just say. Don Ferra, never send money to strangers. Winners of competitions are contacted through official channels and are never asked to pay for anything. Stay tuned for what Kasozi does next. Don't fit up. Refrain from unnecessary engagements with strangers over the phone. This message is powered by UCC, MTN, Airtel, Bank of Uganda, and NPSP Association. Audible packages, great entertainment, sports, the local gold, telenovela, the movies. There is something for everybody. Everybody. Go TV. This is where our best stories live. The best entertainment for any budget. With Go TV, you will have great entertainment for as little as 13,000 Uganda shillings per month. Go TV, great stories. Zidiwano, Go TV Uganda. Love it. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 200.
250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone network. I remember the lockdown when the streets were empty and our lives disrupted when businesses closed and our livelihoods hung in the balance hospitals were full we lost loved ones jobs and hope our children couldn't study anymore we cannot let this happen again. We should not go back. Get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and join the millions of Ugandans who are already vaccinated. The Oil and Gas Moment broke you buy Petroleum Authority of Uganda, creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey. In order to be contracted to supply goods and services for oil activities in Uganda, you must register on the National Suppliers Database. Between 2017 and 2021, close to 400 Ugandan entities were awarded various contracts to supply goods and services to the sector. Uh, Tech Club Limited is a geosciences company that has been offering uh, geotechnical and geophysical investigation services to the East African market since its inception in uh, 2002. Our experience working with AMA Energy has been a pleasurable one. Uh, the seismic surveys have always been on our radar and when this opportunity came up, we put together a winning bid and became the first Ugandan company to provide seismic services under an oil and gas contract in Uganda. Registration on the National Suppliers Database is free. Visit www.pau.go.ug. Creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey. Princess! Is that a problem? Uh, honey, relax. There'll be no more worries about SMSs phone calls to do data because daddy has got an Airtel smart plan. <laughs> there is even Airtel TV. <laughs> it means no worries. <laughs> Enjoy life worry-free with Airtel smart plan. Shareable among five people. Use every day and pay Getting a birth certificate is as easy as one, two, three. One, get a birth notification record stamped by a medical officer from a medical facility where the baby was born. Or from a sub-county chief if the birth occurred in the community. Two, go to the nearer offices in your area and present the notification record, a copy of the parents or guardians national ID, and a bank payment slip of 5,000 shillings for citizens and $40 for non-citizens. Three, apply by filing NERA Form 3 from NERA offices or download it from the NERA website www.nira.go.ug A birth certificate will then be issued to you. Birth certificates to refugees born in Uganda are free of charge. This message is brought to you by Nira. Welcome back from that break and this is the first edition of News Tonight here on UBC TV and a warm welcome to those of you just joining us. Government has put aside 200 billion shillings in commercial banks as a merchant grant with an interest rate of 10% for small businesses. Now while launching the small business enterprises, Minister David Bahati asked retail and small businesses enterprises to take you to utilize government initiatives in boosting their businesses. Let's get more in this story. Small businesses with no hope of getting loans and lack of capital to sustain them will benefit from the 200 billion shillings government support to small business enterprises. 
State Minister for Trade, David Bahati, says government has put aside 200 billion in commercial banks as a merchant grant with an interest rate of 10 percent now we have directed the UDC, uh, uganda, uganda national bureau of standards to pay attention to support these people when they come in let them be cleared as keep the quality uh, the standards but clear them with speed we are also as uh, negotiating markets we have european market now we have a Goa market, we have African pre trade area, a population of 1.2 billion, and also a, a market that imports 547 billion. Uh, to make sure that even they can loan to these businesses uh, at a reduced cost below the, what the market rate is. And so that's, these are some. They have also put an innovation fund of 30 billion for innovation and research. Then in the next five years, they should be able to grow up. Those also involved in manufacturing that have been having a problem of land. Now, in the next one year, we are developing five industrial parks. And in each industrial park, we shall have land for small, medium enterprises to start their factories. The chairman, SMEs Humphrey Mutasa, asked all entities involved in businesses to revise rates imposed on these businesses in favor of the operators. When they are speaking about taxation, when they are speaking about bad roads, when they are speaking about bad rentals, when they are speaking about I mean, what affects them, we don't see big companies come through and join the team. No. We want when we speak about small businesses, ah, yeah. Even they say, what is MTN doing there? Yes, it is supporting MSMEs because if they die, his brand is not going to the villages. The micro, small and medium-sized enterprises day was on the theme, unlocking the potential of micro, small and medium-sized enterprises for post-COVID-19 recovery. Shaydat Nasaku, UBC News. A state minister for, uh, I beg your pardon, um, the Forum for Democratic Change, FDC, has unveiled flag bearers for the August by-election of Member of Parliament uh, for Busongora, Sam County in Kasese District and uh, Bukimbiri County in Kisoro District. Now this follows court in nullifying the elections and ordering for by-elections. During FDC weekly press briefing at uh, Najanan Kumbi, the Deputy President, Western Region William Onzogu, appreciated the court ruling. And the task to bring victory to the Forum for Democratic Change, come rain, come sunshine. One FDC. Uganda, one, one people, people, one people, one, one Uganda. Uganda. FDC, oi, oi, FDC, oi, oi. Southwestern Uganda is none other than Owebei James. Yeah, the, the, the teaching says is become is related. If this and we shall do everything humanly possible to ensure that we reclaim this territory. The party's Deputy Secretary General Harold Kai just said they joined the campaign for this region. Look at them when you run the numbers, our candidate with his pure votes he actually defeated them, but because there was a lot of bout staffing, they were able to have that, that mark. But those who know the terrain of Cassis and we now fuss on the ground, I'm not seeing anybody who will be able to reach an election. And we want to anybody want to reach an election. Leave your will behind. The party advises government to waive off taxes of commodities and subsidize on the escalating fuel prices. I'm Nafka Farida in Najanan Kombi. Now in uh, our latest uh, development, government uh, schools in Kabaroli district have maintained uh, the students' teaching and learning process amid the ongoing uh, teachers' industrial action. In some schools, UBC TV managed to visit. Learners were busy with their, le with their daily lessons. This is Impanga Secondary, a government school in Fort Potro Tourism City with a population of over 2,000 students. At this school, we found both students and teachers busy with their daily class work uninterruptedly. That means it goes once, that it goes once. It goes once. It goes once. We look at examples 
Riyonga George, the school head teacher, explains how this school was not affected by the industrial action. When the industrial action started, the school kept running basically on the teachers of science and those who are not paid for by government. But later on, we talked to the teachers of arts keep around and do some work. With many teachers at this school paid by parents, this is the student teaching and learning process. There's no way they would leave the students without attending to them when the parents are voluntarily paying for their salaries. So those continue doing the work and keep the school running. At Kahinju Secondary School, another government school in Fort Potro North Division, the situation is not any different. Students were busy learning. <laughs> According to Zebi Di Buambali, the head teacher at Kahinju Secondary School, the school used the available teachers avoid affecting students' education. The rest 17 are also human, but they are now teaching. Teacher says the strike did not affect the students. Our children are studying moment, almost like it used to be even before the instruction. I'm doing my work because I'm employed here by the Board of Governors and I'm teaching. On Friday last week, Kavarole District Council condemned the industrial action following the effects of COVID-19 on students. We have adverse effects in the teaching and learning process and hence affecting the performance of learners in the long run. District councillors say students have suffered a lot with COVID-19 effects and should not be punished by the teacher's strike. It's not really and it's mm. That is some news from uh, Fort Portal City and uh, of course as you've seen some, uh, some schools, uh, the teachers are in class and it's business as usual. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Minister for Public Service Mururi Mkasa has appealed to teachers to report to class as government starts implementing uh, the phased salary enhancement policy uh, for all public servants. Now, the minister was addressing journalists at the ministry headquarters here in Kampala. The Minister of Public Service has appealed to striking teachers to return to class as they wait for government to implement an enhancement to teachers' salary. The argument, uh, the issue now is enhancement. We should be asking questions like, yes, you have agreed to enhance the science teachers up to that level. When are the arts teachers going to be enhanced? These are the questions which should be asked. Uh, to what level? Okay. If those are starting at four, then where are the arts going to start from? And the other related uh, you know, civil servants. You know, those are the questions. And once we have uh, good answers, then we say, okay, fine. If that's the case, yes, we can afford to wait for one year. Then all ourselves, uh, even us, will go up there. And uh, let's go back and teach. After all, the people are punishing our innocent children. Where is, the, where is the equation in the penitentiary of the children? Public Service Minister Mululi Mukasa adds that government's roadmap to implement salary enhancement in a phased manner was implemented in 2018-2019 financial year, but due to COVID-19, the process was disrupted. Uh, when we are thinking of uh, enhancement, we are looking at the entire service. Yes would have wanted to handle the service at once. But because of the limitations of the funding, we are now forced, as really as a tactic, really, in the overall strategy, that, okay, let's take section by section, which you can adequately handle, and we go on like that uh, every year. We look at the different section until finally we have covered the entire service. The minister also added that the salary enhancement for science teachers applies to all science-based units in different government departments. The health workers have got an enhancement. And the category, the veterinary doctors like agriculturists, all those fall in that category of scientists. You see, 
So those have got an increment. And uh, actually, I think rather than being uh, 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 vilified by the country, I think we should be appreciated for struggling under these very hard conditions to raise the salary of certain sections of our service. The minister also noted that science was given priority due to its vital role in society, but also attract scientists who look for greener pastures outside the country. That science is basic to the development of society. It is at the bottom, at the base of the development of society. And it is so critical that it really propels change, transformation, is very critical. And indeed, many of our very good and uh, eminent scientists have gone out of the country, to the neighboring countries, to Europe, elsewhere, for uh, better pay, better wage. And they're doing a very good job there. The government also intends to increase salary for other sectors of public servants, starting with security personnel, teachers, in the next financial years. So all these, therefore, will be considered. And we are saying, okay, we have worked out as public service um, a roadmap, which was a revision of what we had agreed on earlier on in 2018-19. Now, because of all these interventions which came in, and we are not unexpected, so we have got to push the uh, roadmap a little bit ahead so that um, instead of ending 24, 23, 24, we have to move on to 24, 25, 25, 26, then everybody will have been enhanced. Sada Mubale, UBC News, Kampala. Gagan in your Kawaga or Pamela, a mananu Gadibans are a massindi by two Nicara Kagoma Maganjo. So Kavanda, Nicari and in Korea, younger at home, Yara a landline number calling here MTN. So when you are sitting at your corner, Gamanza Zahara to I'm calling you from MTN or Hungry Motoka. I just said, Kali. Not believing as chicken is anti the latch too for young ambos in with a motor car, a gagger come back to a day. So I'm so happy. Thank you, MTN Bananga. It is real. Biamana no, see, we have paid it. Southern Waka with MTN Momo Yabo. Simply deposit 20k or more on your mobile money for a chance to win three Toyota Succeed and money to 2,000 lucky winners every week. We're giving away 24 cars and over 2 billion shillings of mobile money. Are you a player in the tourism sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic? UDB, in partnership with European Union, is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a turnover of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Welcome back from that break. Uh, this is uh, News Tonight here on UBC TV. Let's have a look now at what's happening in the world of business. Local firms are encouraged to form joint ventures and get their strategies right in order to be competitive in the bidding process for National Social Security Fund business uh, deals. Now, the emphasis was made by Richard uh, Yorgaba, the MD NSSF, at the sixth annual suppliers forum held here in Kampala. In the financial year 2022-2023, the National Social Security Fund has set aside Uganda shillings 547 billion to real estate projects, 21 billion to IT systems and computer equipment, 2.4 billion to furniture and office equipment, and 0.51 billion to motor vehicles. So we are reserving based on thresholds to both national and resident providers 
uh, and still under this category of thresholds, we have supplies, procurement of supplies um, of 1 billion and below. There you can participate as locals. The procurements are reserved for uh, both national and resident providers, 1 billion and below. Two, still under thresholds, we have uh, procurement for roadworks, 45 billion and below. It may seem like a lucrative business opportunity for the business community. However, rules and guidelines do apply. Annually, Ugandan farms get 90% businesses from the fund, but only get 20% of the total contract value, says Richard Biarugaba, the managing director, and If you are running a business without knowing who your competitors are, without knowing, having the data about your business, you are like that guy who is crossing the road with his face blindfolded. So remember that analogy, that you need as a business to be able to make, put those policies and practices in your company that will enable you to look a little bit better. The Suppliers Forum has three main objectives, namely to get feedback from the suppliers on how to improve, to give suppliers hints on how they can do better, and to create a platform for suppliers to network and create business opportunities. Stationary, that is ladish activities, and they have dominated that space. When you go to wax, brick wax, they sent togos of this world and poor and uh, they, they dominate and it's by nature our business. So we don't have um, IT, IT again is a little bit dominated by men, but it's the numbers are coming up slowly. Some of the challenges highlighted by NSSF that impede the competitiveness of Ugandan farms include high mistrust from foreign farms, high tendering requirements and underpricing by fellow bidders. Dennis Igoa and Valerie Tumhechi for UBC News. Sports News now, and uh, State Minister for Sports, uh, Hamson Oboa, has hosted the 10th National Sports Forum, attended by almost each of the 51 sports federations signed up at the National Council of Sports. The main talking point was about appropriation of the 47 billion shillings that was allocated to the sports uh, fraternity for the next financial year 2022-2023. Minister Oboa clearly stipulated how the money will be shared amongst the federations with the Federation of Uganda Football Association's FUFA taking the lion's share, but all other considered. He urged federations to pursue excellence that can increase the school's lobbying, uh, the, the, the sector's uh, lobbying uh, powers ahead of budget for upcoming years uh, starting with 2023-2024. The budget to Uganda's sports sector has been increased from 17 billion to 47.8 billion shillings. The minister says that appropriation of the funds to respective federations will depend on what is released per quarter. He also called for respect of structures in order to grow sports in this country. And that uh, sports story brings us to the end of this first edition of News Tonight here on UBC TV. But before we leave you, let's have a quick reminder of our top stories. In our news headlines tonight, Prime Minister Robina Nabanja describes the arts teachers industrial action as uncalled for. Police crime report shows poverty and economic hardships fueling crime. Government commits 200 billion shillings in commercial banks as a merchant grant. And in sports, the sports minister urges federations to pursue excellence to increase the sector's lobbying powers. It's coming to three minutes to nine in the studios of UBC TV. Thank you so much for having kept us company. Elizabeth Nakakoni has been on sign language and I'm Rukidi Ajod Kijanangoma. See you at 10.
the family of the late Pelusi Mpaka Aboki of Rengoma Fort Pocho Kabarole district with deep sorrow announced the death of their mom Pelusi Mpaka Aboki which occurred today Monday 27th June 2022 at Mengo Hospital there will be an overnight vigil today Monday 27th at Latif Ngonzi residence in Kungu off Chanja Ring Road in Kampala. Then a funeral service at St. Luke's Church in Tinda on Tuesday the 28th of June 2022. The body will then be taken to her home at Rengoma Fort Potro and on Wednesday 29th June 2022 a funeral service will be held at St. Andrew's Church Rengoma. She will be laid to rest thereafter at Rengoma Fort Potro Kabarole district on Thursday the 30th of June 2022 informed are the members of Katewa Veterans Group relatives friends and well wishers may her soul rest in eternal peace Tales of Kasozi, brought to you by Uganda Communications Commission. Yes, hello? This is Kasozi. How can I help you? Calling you from the mobile service center. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So how can I help you? Well, we have noticed a few things wrong with your number and need your mobile money pin. Ton Ferra, never give out your password or pin to any caller. Your mobile service provider will never call or ask for your personal details. If in doubt, go to your nearest phone service center. This message is powered by UCC, MTN Airtel, Bank of Uganda and NPSP Association. Water gives life. Water is life. But not all water 